G'day subscribers, welcome to the Off The Cuff YouTube channel. This platform was created to aspire young sport talents who may learn from the untold stories and experiences of the various guest speakers who will enlighten us about their sporting journeys. Today we host our first guest and conducting the interview is a well-known award-winning and versatile South African funny man. He's better known for his roles in Blitz Patrolli, Running Riot and Bunny Chow, amongst others. The man who made the circle bigger. Welcome, Joey Resting. Yeah, if you're watching me, I hope you watch material. And material two is also coming. But that's not why we're here today. We're here today because we are, uh, I'm, I had the honor and the privilege to interview one of the most influential and most hero colored people in South Africa. Yeah, so somebody that I always looked up to. So I'm actually fortunate and glad to be able to ask him a couple of questions. Our guest today, ladies and gentlemen, has coached two international cricket teams. He's a Champions League finalist, a South African domestic champion. He was once a Protea and he's now a Tiger. Welcome, Russell Domingo. Thanks for the intro. How's it, Joey? Good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Russell, yesterday. I just want to know, uh, so you're in PE now. For the people that don't know, Russell Domingo is actually now the current coach of uh, the Bangladesh cricket team, right? Uh, that I, was in, in, in August, eh? when was it? In August? I am, I, I am. I was appointed towards the end of August, so about seven months in the job now, and I've really enjoyed it. But I'm glad to be in lockdown in Port Elizabeth at the moment with my family. Not, not in Bangladesh, because I in saw Bangladesh. in August, no, in November, I saw a picture on the 1st of November when you actually employed Daniel Vittori, and you guys were wearing masks already. Yeah, I think, I think that was actually in India, but that was for pollution. Um, there were high levels of pollution in Delhi. It was unbelievable. So, look, maybe we preempted all of this stuff with our mask wearing in India a couple of months ago. So you had a mask on already. So tell me about um, Bangladesh. You employed De uh, Daniel Vittori, and then you had Mac, Neil McKenzie, and Charles Langefeld. And um, Cook, you know, Ryan Cook, small Cook. Ryan Cook, yeah, we've, we've, yeah. we've got a whole host of South Africans and uh, and one Kiwi, and uh, it's amazing how things work out. I've also got a West Indian now. Otis Gibson's my bowling coach because Charles Langerfeld's gone, he's, he's gone back to South Africa. So it's myself, Otis Gibson as a bowling coach. I've got Ryan Cook as a fielding coach, and I've got Neil McKenzie as a, a batting coach. So a couple of South Africans in the mix, um, a New Zealander and a West Indian. So we've got a good flavor. A lot of experience in our coaching team and some some really good guys to work with. Well. Okay. So, hey, this is a controversial thing to ask. The talent of Bangladesh cricket as opposed to the talent of Gal Galvindale cricket. <laughs> <laughs> both, <laughs> both, both, both play with a little bit of flair. Uh, <laughs> both um, very talented, very passionate. Um, look, it's a tough one. It's Bangladesh have got some really good players at the moment, some good young players. You've seen they've They've won an under-19 World Cup. Yeah, they were so, but yeah. That under-19 World Cup, I watched the final. It felt like they were from Katanga. They somehow wanted to... <laughs> what? No, they, 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 got, they got some tough boys. The boys come from some tough neighbours there and have some tough upbringing. So, look, so, okay, yeah. the cricket is, is, not, is, not, is not tough for them because they've, they've, they've got some really tough upbringings in that particular part of the world. So, good for them. Speaking about, about tough upbringings and they can, you you familiar with um, tough upbringing because you yourself were like um, uh, playing at Galvanian Cricket Club, Cricket Club, and then um, Claude Simon. Tell me about Claude Simon um, and his influence on the club and the young players. For people that don't know who's Claude Simon, who's it to you, Russell? He's a legend. Look, I think Mr. Simon was a was afforded an award with Cricket South Africa about four or five years ago and he, he declined to accept it uh, just because he thinks that he, he didn't need to get an award for what he was doing. But, I mean, Mr. Simon is governor of Cricket Club. I mean, if it weren't for Mr. Simon, so many guys wouldn't have 
made a career in cricket. I think of myself, I think of Ashwell, I think of Garnet, I think of Nigel Browse, Clint Duplessis, Junaid Sitema, the list goes on and on. And it's largely due to the passion and commitment from a man like Mr. Simon. He used to walk everywhere. He was a... He used to walk from his house to practices every day, to meetings, unbelievably fit man, a true gentleman and a wonderful role model for so many of us who grew up in Galvanda. Um, and yeah, I can't speak highly enough about him. You mentioned lots of names there. Um, you mentioned Ashwell Prince, you mentioned Garnet Kruger, you mentioned Junaid September. So you and Junaid September and Lulama, you guys went to um, Chapman. Is that, is yeah, we were, we were all at school together. Myself, Muzzy, who is no longer with us, Junaid yeah. September. We were all great friends and played a lot of cricket together. Unfortunately, we didn't play a lot of games for our school um, because Chapman didn't quite have the facilities. We played the odd game every now and then, but that's where yeah. club cricket was so important for us um, and yeah. probably benefited us because we were playing with a lot of senior guys. Mr. Jordan, Max Jordan, was yes. my geography teacher was also my first captain at Galvanda. Um, so okay. when I was in stand, when I was in stand at nine, failing most of Jordan's geography tests, he was captaining me on a Saturday. <laughs> so <laughs> just Max Jordan is Danny Jordan's brother, right? Danny Jordan's brother, yeah. And we actually ended up working together quite a lot for Cricket in Africa when I was with the national team. It's amazing how things have worked out. So you are a Domingo from, from PE, from uh, uh, Avalon Crescent. Ne? From Avalon Crescent, that's it. How was the Strat Cricket there in Avalon Crescent? How, Crescent, how was that there? That's where we learned. I mean, we didn't have nets and we didn't have um, cricket balls and pads mm. and stuff. We used, to, we used to call it, we're going to challenge our own Crescent boys. And we used to take a walk down with our bats and our, our, our bread, um, the bread crates as cricket stumps and we used to tape our tennis balls. And we should mm. challenge Clint Duplessis and Ashwell Prince and those boys to a game of cricket under lights, under the lamppost. And that's how we learned our cricket. That's, that's generally where we, would, where we taught ourselves how to play. You'd say that um, Bangladesh, uh, most of their players have a, um, some sort of similar um, cricket learning experience. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, a lot of it is self-taught, uh, watching television idolizing some players on TV and trying to emulate what they do, try and copy what those players do type of thing. So that's, that's, that's how they learn. And I suppose that's how we learn to play our cricket as well. Um, I'm glad that, like, Mac is, I like Mac, like, as a person and as a cricketer. Uh, he's a nice guy to have in the, in, in around, uh, McKenzie, for the people that don't know, um, Leo McKenzie. Uh, you are at the, uh, so, yeah, my point is, um, there's some sort of calmness that Mac brings to players that comes from um, difficult backgrounds. Would you agree with that statement or would you say, um, or, or basically what I'm asking is, why, what's the reason why you brought Mac in? Look, Mac, he was there before I got there. He, was, he worked with me for with South Africa. Uh, I got him to work with us for South Africa for mm -hmm. the two years that he was there, my last two years with South Africa, and he worked with us now. I really enjoyed working with him. He's a, like you say, he's a calm guy. He's got a lot of playing experience, but also a really nice guy, easy guy to get on with. Um, and then he, then after he left South Africa, when Otis took over, he then got an opportunity to work as a consultant with Bangladesh. Hmm. And fortunately, he has stayed on and I've joined there and I'm, I'm glad that he stayed on and hmm. I enjoy working with him. We've always we've known each other for a long time and I enjoy the way he goes about his business. He's very technical, but also understands the challenges players go through in terms of confidence and... Um, so, so, would you say you need a, like a senior states person type of role model to make, to take players to the next level? What I mean by that is, tell me about what Eldin Baptiste meant to Calvindale Cricket Club, for instance. Yeah, look, I play a lot and I keep in touch with Bep a lot of the times, but I mean, Bep was a guy who played test cricket and he's a... a West One Indian. The West Indian test. He played 19 tests with Viv Richards and just sitting around the field of the day's play, listening to the stories of West Indian cricket and Viv Richards and how they went about things was fascinating. But I think the most important thing with, with Bep was that how disciplined he was as a cricketer. His cricket kit was always immaculate. It was always neatly packed in compartments. Nothing was out of place. He made sure he stretched properly stretched after the day's play. 
He thought about the game. He shared his knowledge with the boys. And he was a fantastic role model for a lot of aspiring young, particularly fast bowlers who were trying to make it in cricket those days because Pep was fit as can be. He was never injured. He had no fat in him. He was ripped like you cannot believe. He was an ultimate professional. So a great role model for a lot of the boys playing in that system. Yes, that's what I was going to say. That role model you need at some some somebody. Absolutely. That, yeah. Oh, and then so would you say? Uh, let's speak about your your dad. Let's speak about you because you <laughs> yeah. go from, from PE, and yeah. I know lots of Domingos in Johannesburg and in Cape Town, and some of the Domingos that I know is like distant family of ours, and I know the surname Domingo is everybody that's got that surname is some way related to each other in South <laughs> Africa. Probably, yeah. Yeah, like you are. Because you guys look the same. Like, you look like Domingos. You look like... Well, that's Domingos. That's why we do Domingos. Yeah. yeah, that's the Domingos. What influence would you say your father, Uncle Wendell, played on your um, um, cricketing um, career? Or the influence? What influence did he bring? I think, I think if you ask anybody at Galvondale Cricket Club, my father was passionate about cricket. Whew. He used to love cricket. He never missed a game. He used to be outspoken. He used to abuse. He used to put me under pressure. He used to shout at me if I didn't get runs or if I played a bad shot. But he just wanted us to do well. He always, I think he was one of those generations that probably didn't get opportunities because of apartheid in the past and, and wanted the best for our guys and his son and the teammates and the players around us. He wanted us to do well and compete at the highest level. Maybe sometimes he crossed the line a bit and got a bit too emotional and too passionate. He, he put me under a lot of pressure. I know as a cricketer, but I know that he meant well. And if it wasn't for my father's influence and him taking me to cricket and teaching me about the game and encouraging me and providing me with things maybe other kids didn't have, I wouldn't have been where I am today. There's no doubt about that. So that me so a parent play a big role in the love of of um, cricket or any sport a child might have. Yeah, you say? not just not just not just sport, but in life. I mean, I learned so much about my father about relationships and getting on with people and communicating with people and respecting people. The cricket was a small thing. It's about being a good person. I think that's that's the most important role a father can play. And when fathers aren't there, often. At least to some harder times, the kids. I'm fortunate that I had my father with me all the way. Yeah, and I think the community of Galvandale is quite close knit. Um, I want you to speak about all the players, not only cricketers but soccer guys, hockey guys that you've come across in um, around Galvandale, around PE. Because I have this uh thing where i say the most springbok colored people come from that 50 square meter radius well, yeah, like, it's, it's, it's amazing if i think of cricket i mean i just think of guys like brent cox lao may who all played for the warriors i mean lao played i think 20 international hockey games for south africa um oh, wow. I, yeah i mean phenomenal sports when i think of God, I think of Robin Peterson, I think of Alvaro Peterson, Junaid September, um, Warren Bell. Um, I know his rugby boots are still framed at the Grey High School. I think he scored all 20 points against Grey Bloom. He intercepted, oh. a, Francois, he intercepted a Francois Stein pop-up pass and scored the winning try under the poles <laughs> and then converted. So I think that might have been the last time Grey P beat Grey Bloom and Warren Bell was the guy who scored all the points. Yeah. So a whole, a whole host of talented sports will come. Then on the soccer field, I think of guys like Dougie hey. Williams, Dougie Williams, Munir Safarin, Bravo Jacobs, Glendon de Kock, Johnny Smith, and Dane Johnny Clayton. Smith, Dane Clay, um, the, a whole host, Frankie Schumann. Yeah. Wayne Parnell. Wayne Parnell. So, and then the next generation, Johnny Smith's son now is a boy called Jade Smith, who was also at Galvandale. Oh, it's the serious cricketer, serious, serious cricketer. So, what I'm trying to understand here is like throughout um, apartheid and a state of emergency and um, all this, Galvandale and that area still produced. What would you say is the key? 
as to why because i you've touched on it you've touched on certain things like your influence your father had on you the influence mr simon had um what would you say is like the key because i know lots of Gavendale boys that is like guys that family guys that's got good values that got we, the talent is not just there in the back but the foundation is that foundation of i'm a, a good person um we are mannered um we're gonna party we party hard but there's never um uh, uh rudeness or there's never offensiveness it's always like we're always trying they always because i'm i'm not i didn't grow up there but it seems like they're always trying to lift each other up like even on social media, you'll see that Ashwell Prince is there for your support. You'll see that um, guys, they support, there's a support each support structure. Um, would you? Can you perhaps put that into words for me? You see that fabric. I think, I, think I, 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 I really think back in our day, like there were a whole host of schools around there: Galvandale High School, Chapman High School, St Thomas, and we had really good teachers, um, really good people. Um, that were sports people, but also actively involved in, in the communities. And I think the teachers play such a big role. They, they probably spend more time with the children than the, the parents do most of the time. So, so the, the role models we had at school, I think of guys like Richard Dolly, who taught my wife, Gary, Trevor Dolly, who taught me at high school, Mr. Jordan, who taught me at high school, Mr. Benjamin, who was a big uh, Christian, who was our headmaster at the school, Mr. Serpentine. So really good role models for us as school. Andrew Barry, I mean, he's cricketing family of the Barrys are big cricketing families. Gary Barry, Reggie Barry, their brother Andrew Barry taught me at school. Um, so I think the teachers play a massive role in being good role models for the school, for the kids, and also keeping the kids in line, uh, disciplining them, showing them the right ways to do things, encouraging them, trying to lead them into doing the right things going forward. You know all the guys are all the guys that I know, like Garnet and and Dane. They say the same thing. They had solid teachers. Solid teachers. Solid people. Like they felt loved going to school. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I think I think the teachers play a play a massive role. I mean, when I think of my teaching, I went to a, a, a primary school in Shorter, and Mr. Dry was my teacher. Mr. Dry ended up being my cricket coach. Stephen Dry is a legend. I mean, Mr. Dry was one of the best soccer players at Hotspurs and one of the best cricketers at Eastern Province. Um, wow. So those are the people that, that, that inspired us when we were younger boys, but they were our school teachers, but also encouraged us to do sport. So that's the thing about Galvandale. You were lucky to have certain types of role models that um, showed love, but showed lots of discipline as well. Absolutely. So Absolutely. as much as they loved you, they disciplined you immediately. No, I got lots of hidings from Mr. Dry at primary school, but I still see him regularly and we laugh about it. Mr. Dolly used to hit me hard there in my history classes, but he was a great teacher. I know the subscribers is going to love this because he's going to take <laughs> them back as well. He's going to take them back as well. So, um, so moving on, moving on. Um, and then you became coach of the, the Warriors. And then you won all these things. You won the 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 um, all the championships and stuff. You did really well in 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 local cricket. And then Bob Wilmer, tell me what influence Bob Wilmer had on you. Yeah, Thank look, you. I worked I worked a little bit with, with Bob Wilmer as a you know I was still a young coach. Um, mm -hmm. Look, I didn't, spend a, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't spend a great deal of time with him, but the guys who who I worked closely with in terms of coaching was obviously. Graham Ford and, and A.D. Burrell, they were two coaches that, that like really influenced me a, a great deal. A.D., I chat to him every day still. He, was, he coached me when I was a youngster. He's and a good guy. Ended, no, he's a, he's a great guy. And then he ended up being my boss for EP Cricket. Then I ended up being his boss when he worked with me for Cricket South Africa. I was the head coach. He was the assistant. Um, but he's now currently in Hampshire. But I think if you ask a lot of players, young players who played under them, who the most influential coach would be, a lot of them would say Adrian Burrell. I mean, guys like Nigel Browse, Ashwell Prince, um, uh, Junaid September, Lulama Masikazana. AD played a massive role in developing those guys in, in the three levels. And he's been a massive mentor for me, him and along with someone like Graham Ford, who I've worked a lot with, really good guys that I enjoyed working with. So you took over from Gary Kirsten. Yep. yep. How was yep. that? No, big like, pressure because that is 
Like people don't understand that. People don't yeah. understand the magna, mag, magnitude of that. No, it's, it's and like, you still come from Galvindale. And you still <laughs> come from, and, and you know, like there's so much, it's, it felt like for me, it felt like, yes, this guy's got so much stacked against him and yet he's still going to do it. You need to be some type of person to, to, to do that. What was going through your mind? Yeah, and, look, and, and how did you handle it? Like I said, I think earlier on, it's like when you take over from Gary Kirsten, it's like, like taking over from Alex Ferguson and old yes. type of thing. You're on, a, you're on a hiding to nothing. But look, I think we're fortunate that we had a really good senior group of players. Um, it was near the end of Graham Smith's career uh, in terms of captaincy. But there were some good young leaders in the team. I think I developed a good relationship with guys like Hashim Amla, Puff Duplessis, um, Avery Villiers, Vernon Philander, then got in some younger players. And at the end of the day, you can be the best coach in the world, but it's up to your players. I was forced that we still had some fantastic players in that particular side. Obviously, there was no Callis, there was no Smith, but we still had the Villiers, Amla, Stain, Morkel, and then bringing in some young players like the Cock and Rabada and those type of players helped us. But yeah, it's, it's never going to be easy. And for a period of time, especially... When we went to India and we played against England, we took a bit of a dip. I think we ended up going from number one to number seventh in the test rankings, but then yeah, managed to get good. ourselves we managed to get ourselves back up to number two. Um, so that was that was fantastic for us, I think, to, to try and get the side back going after losing quite a few players. I think Bangladesh is higher than us in test rankings now. At the moment, I think yeah. I see the FK is ranked number six at the moment. No, Bangladesh yeah. is not higher than the FK yet. <laughs> Can I ask but, you this? Yeah. Um, there's this opening batsman of Tamim, Tamim. Tamim Iqbal, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's from Bangladesh. I would love to see him open a batting for us, because we don't have an opening batter anymore, Dean and who. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a, he's a, well, I think Mark is going to be the guy to probably open the batting for a while, but, but Tamim's a good player. Uh, yeah. Very good. Yeah, I like, very good. I like that. Mm -hmm. Very good player. It's, it's, it's one of those in, in your, in your face, um, type of, type of guys. Yeah. He's positive, he backs himself. You spoke about Mr. Dry and you spoke about your primary school influences and you also spoke about Mr. Yortanyo. I, I was going to ask you these questions, but you just um, uh, take it out. You just brought it up. Now, the people in Galvindale right now, I know, I know, you, you, are you close with Shafiq? Shafiq Abrams? Yeah, Shafiq Abrams. Yeah, look, we know each other well. We, we, we good, we, we're good friends. I haven't seen him for a while, but yeah, we do keep in touch quite regularly. So, so what is the, the next step? Because what, what basically, what is the formula to try and keep that line of talent going from a place like Calvin Dam? I know it's not, it's an unspoken formula, but people move out. Like Garnet is staying now in four ways, wah, wah, wah. Uh, Ashel Prince is staying in, in Camps Bay, wah, wah, wah. He's now like, everybody is just wah, wah, wah now. Wayne Panyal is now an influencer, wah, wah, wah. So that formula, um, what that, go, you spoke about teachers and, and teachers being role model. Speak about gorgeous Gord. Do you know Gordon? Gordon Kemp, I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. The last time I saw Gordon, he got stitches from dropping a catch in a warm-up just above his eye. But he was our left-arm spinner. A lovely yeah. man. <laughs> but, why is he still playing? Is he still playing? I don't know if he's still playing, but Gordon, Keith Wenzel, I mean, those, those guys were school teachers as well. But they institutions. they legends at the club because we learned so much playing with him. Peter Hafti. All, yes, play, all legends. Those are the guys we played with. Gary Paul. Those are all the guys that as youngsters, 16, 17, we mm. came in to play Premier League cricket and they were the senior men in the team. So we loved it. It was great times. That's what Ashwell was saying the other day um, in one of our other interviews is that your club cricket was very strong as well. So um, people choose now from Cares and St. Stadions and St. John's and if you don't go to Bucray Bloom and what, what or Power Boys, uh, Bishops, Weinberg, all this great schools, but in PE, it was great club cricket. And it the was. guys, the professionals, used to play in that club leagues. And now it seems like that's um, watered down. People, it folded out now. Yeah, it's tough because, number one, um, facilities are a problem. And so, they, I mean, when we played cricket for Gamla, we played at the Adcock. It was a municipal facility. 
Um, it was still well maintained and the wickets were reasonably good. I think now there are just so many clubs playing in the top league that it's so difficult to give everybody great facilities. And cricket, unfortunately, is a game, unlike soccer, in cricket, your facilities have to be good. If you want to produce good cricketers, you have to have good facilities because it's very difficult to, to learn how to bat or be a consistent bowler if the wickets aren't that good or if the run-ups aren't good enough or if the outfield's not great. So I think providing good facilities is the biggest challenge that particularly underprivileged clubs face at the moment. Um, and that's where the challenge lies. Is we were fortunate we had the Adcock was well maintained by the municipality. I know Galvindale Kid facilities is pretty good, are good at the moment, but it's the other clubs that are really struggling to make sure that they can have a high level of competition against clubs like Galvindale or Old Grey or PCC to make sure that the players are being challenged week in and week out. Often nowadays in club cricket, Galvindale might get 300 and the other team might get 40. Or yeah. Old Grey scores 280 and the other team gets 60. So nobody benefits from that. Whereas in the, in the previous oh, years, Galvindale will get 240 and Old Grey 235. Or the other team get 270 and the other team 265. There was always competition. Always competition. Absolutely. A lot of you guys played like, like I, I remember there was like Philip M and Mark Rashmir and those guys all played club yeah, cricket. I mean, Ashel, Ashel, I'll tell you, I'll never, yeah, get an, I'll never get an innings Ashel played against PCC where he was about 16 or 17 and Rod McCurdy was playing. He was the fast bowler for Eastern Yeah, Thomas no, the Australian. Rod yeah, McCurdy, Richard Maguire. Ashel absolutely destroyed him in that day. But that's the type of competition that we were playing against those type of yeah. Yeah, One week you could face Brett Schultz, the next week, you're playing with Aldine Baptiste. The next week, you're playing against uh, Philip M. So those are the, 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 the tough yeah. competitions you face those days. Yes. So, in you were speaking about facilities. How are the facilities in Bangladesh, though? Tough. Um, I think that the national team facilities are pretty good, but the but other the, facilities yeah. around there, very tough. Very tough. Yesterday. When did you come back um, to South Africa to be in lockdown? I got back the 12th of March and I think we went into lockdown like two weeks later. So I got back home just in time. I also could have been stuck in Dakar away from Eish. my family in a hotel. Eish. That would have been tough. Hey, that would have been tough. Eh? Yo, imagine that, that lockdown yesterday. And it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny how things work in a, a, a very, um, how God works actually. Um, the return of investment for your soul during this um, COVID-19 um, period right ladies and gentlemen friends that was russell domingo huh yeah, he's got so much so but the whole point of this is he's from a place called galvindale he spoke about certain influences he had and those influences was the teachers and what type of discipline they installed he spoke about um what type of role models he had in Dean baptiste and uncle max he spoke about certain things that we as human beings need on the daily. And it seems to me in a previous time, Galvin Dale um, got that right. That's why we, they produced people like Russell Domingo. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the interview. Russell, do you want to say anything? Because lots of people from PE will watch this. So, uh, so, uh, so, so thanks, say something. Thanks, and, 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 and well done to uh, Garth and Garnet and the boys for the initiative. Um, I follow Galvin Dale closely. Um, I think my son will start playing there in the next year or two. He's only in grade 10 now, so hopefully in the next year or so he'll start playing at the club. And yeah, um, I'm still very closely monitoring how things are going at the club and monitoring how they're doing. Lekka. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the uh, Bangladesh um, cricket coach. Uh, he was our cricket coach, but a uh, guy from Cavendale, Russell Domingo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Joey. And once again, thank you, Russell, for sharing your time and experience to our subscribers. Our next guest on Off the Cuff is a former South African Test batsman. Joey Rastain will ensure that he keeps asking those questions outside the off stump to a player who is better known for his grit and determination. Until next time. Audio Jungle.